探偵はもう死んでる I'm sorry, guys. This series, it's having an effect on me. I just, I can't help it, okay? Just when you see a title like that, it's just, it's so easy. It just, it's so easy to want to say those words. I just, I can't help it. Forgive me. But, uh, is the detective actually dead? That is the question I was wondering when this episode came to a close. Episode two, to be exact. And the reason why, I, you know, I'm saying this is because when you look at the, the whole presentation of episode two and even episode one i'm left wondering is siesta actually dead or is it just an elaborate plot to make you assume she's dead but in reality she's alive in some shape or form because once again in this episode it clarifies that there is like you know non-human things alive in this world like androids etc synthetic life i mean we see the dude pop up again in episode two so it's very clear that they're really wanting to hammer in that it's not just let's say human beings that are alive in this world it can also be androids to a certain extent and we know that certain body parts can be changed in to these different type of like entities so it's clear that siesta potentially could still be alive in some shape or form even if it is true that the new girl nagisa actually has siesta's heart that was revealed within this episode so i just like when i see this episode i'm just left wondering is she actually dead or is there another thing going on here that i'm unaware of and there is a few things that do need to be discussed and that is the fact of the organ donation for instance having our new female character nagisa owning the heart of siesta so, I don't know how many people realize this, but it's clear as day by just the way the ending of episode 2 was. It's set up the fact that all these new characters are probably going to introduce themselves to our main male character, Kimi. Probably had some form of o organ donation to them from Siesta. Like, for instance, we have Nagisa that, you know, donated or, you know, had the heart donated from Siesta. And then now this new girl that appeared at the end most likely had something else donated from Siesta to her. I feel like the more characters that get introduced throughout this show are probably going to be connected to Siesta in some way where she donated something to them. And that's kind of morbid in a certain way because, I mean, when you really think about it, our main male character, Kimi, is getting, like, a harem of you know, I guess, organ donors. That, that's that's literally what's happening. Like, you know, Siesta's organs are literally kind of assembling around Kimi to fall in love with him once again. And that's kind of messed up to a certain extent. I, I, I just, I hope I'm wrong there, but that really is kind of messed up and dark if that is the direction the series is, you know, taking. Which, that is something I do want to talk about. So, the organ donation and the fact that at the beginning of the episode... We had our main male character, Kimi, talk to Nagisa about how there is memory transference. For instance, how your memories can transfer to another person if you donate an organ to them. Now, he was very correct in some of the things he did say. He basically talked about how, you know, there has been cases of when someone receives an organ donation from someone. You know, they obtain some form of memories or abstract differences in their personality than they once had. And this is something that actually has been studied. This is something you can actually type for yourself and look up and there is cases of this happening once again they even stated within this episode it isn't scientifically proven and that is definitely the case but it's still interesting to see kind of a real world fact that actually has tried to be studied a little bit displaying itself in this episode of anime for instance of you know the detective is already dead i do like that and i do wonder how integrated that theme that plot point is going to be embedded into this anime for instance if all these characters that are meeting kimi are drawn to him thanks to just siesta's lingering personality just how attached she was to him and so i just that's it's once again this is a surprisingly dark series like it is a really dark series depending on the direction that it wants to go in but uh yeah i so far i am liking it i mean episode two was definitely a good direction for the story i do however wonder like i said if siesta is indeed gone like if she is in fact gone it just it feels so sad because like her character was just beautifully introduced in the first episode with that hour-long episode and you know finding out at the beginning of episode two that there was like three years of their journeys together like you know adventuring and doing their own thing and finding out that we kind of cut over it to go to the present day it's a little bit sad because it's like there's so much content there that kind of got jumped over you could potentially make an entire anime season of 12 to 
to 20 episodes focusing on the adventures of Siesta and Kimi. So, I just, I do hope that maybe in the future of this show, we get like a flashback. I, I'm going to assume we probably will. For instance, when it actually matters and when certain plot points need to be kind of introduced into the story about certain characters maybe Kimi meets you know maybe we'll have a flashback of Siesta and Kimi going on a certain assignment together but I just I do hope that we don't just skip over that and it's just thrown to the side I do hope it stays relevant because at this point in time there's a big thing that's going to happen within the story that does worry me and that is the fact as we get introduced to more and more characters more female characters etc our attachment to Siesta is going to become strained and the reason why I say that that is, is because when you introduce a character in the first episode, you may like them quite a bit, first impressions and all that, but if you're introduced to more characters and you stick with them for a very long time, you'll fall in love with those characters more than, let's say, the original, for instance, Siesta, and as that continues on, you might not care about Siesta as much as the other characters are like, okay, we don't care, we don't care about this man's lingering attachment to this character, and even though it makes sense why he does, it just, there wasn't enough time with the character for us to fully establish, like, a bond with her, so that's the point I'm trying to make, you know, kind of make make clear right now is the fact I do hope that we get more content with Siesta for we can get more guess dialogue with her more connection emotional connection with her because I want to know how she died I mean if she really did give up her organs donated her organs it sounds to me like she potentially just died of natural causes something along the lines of that because that's the only thing that would make sense but I mean who really knows I just I wanted to point that out now, another thing, too, that needs to be discussed is what is the direction of this story? What What's really going on here? What is the main plot? I mean, we know that, for instance, Siesta is apparently dead, regardless if you think she's somehow alive or whatever, but at this current point, we think she's dead. And what's really going on? What is Kimi really trying to accomplish right now with his life? Because he constantly keeps establishing himself as like a sidekick and he says he's not a legendary detective. Is, you know, Siesta trying to force him even after she's long gone to say that you are a detective now, you ain't a sidekick? Or is, you know, she just trying to give him a very a weird coded message through her organ donations? Who really knows? Like I said, it's a it's a weird one. This is a really weird show. It's enjoyable. It's a fun one, though, but uh, it's weird. Animation art is still very good. I really like this episode, and the only thing that really just feels very off to me is the very thing I complained about in my first impressions of Tante Wa Mo Shinderu, which was, you know how the characters apparently are in school when they technically should be, like, in their 20s. Because, once again, you're not going to tell me our main male character, Kimi, he is, like, 18. Or 17. You're, you're, you're not gonna tell me that. You're, you're not gonna tell me that is his actual age. Because when you look at him throughout the episode, he literally looks like he's in his 20s. I mean, the way he communicates with, you know, the detective, the police officers, how he went into the jail, like the prison, and talked with, uh, you know, an inmate. Just everything about it, just it kind of had this atmosphere of a very mature, you know, personality. And just like, yeah, his character was introduced as a very mature person, but you're not going to tell me a person that age is going to act like that. So it just, he doesn't act his age, and that can be very disconnecting from the character, especially with the setting. I feel like the writer of this series just wanted the school setting, but that's it. That They just wanted the school setting, but then, you know, they wanted adult-like adventures. It's just, it's extremely weird with me. I feel like just the whole setting is really disconnected connected from what the series is really trying to display here because this isn't a high school story this isn't like a, a high school romance story it, it, it's more of a mature detective series with some romance potentially thrown in but not set in high school it's just it's very weird I, I don't know I feel like I, I since we've had a time skip I hope we get disconnected from that setting very soon and we jump to the college setting or whatever needs to be jumped with I have a feeling though most likely if this is indeed the case and we're jumping to a new setting so quickly, if that, you know, does happen, I feel like maybe an editor or something that was, you know, looking over this work probably told the writer, like, hey, you need to put it in a, you know, a high school setting. I, I feel like that's potentially what happened because you know how usually editors can really have something to say to a writer. This happens with manga as well. I mean, I feel like maybe something like that potentially happened is why it feels so disconnected.
Could be wrong. But uh, anyways, yeah, I'm going to continue watching. Been enjoying it. Just hopefully we get to see a little bit more of the plot side of things and get to really see what is actually going to happen. What is the main objective of the story? Because right now, I, I got my teeth sunk in. Like, I, I like what I've seen so far, but I need more. I need more to know where it's going if I should actually give this series more of my time. But I'll leave it at that. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. If you enjoy my content, you know, please subscribe. If you like this video, please leave a like. And if you want to get notified for whenever I upload a video, please click the bell icon down below. And with that... Chibi out.